Now, we want to talk to you about one of the most eagerly anticipated new gadgets of the year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the new 3G iPhone. Look at that. I was a big fan of the original iPhone, uh, but the new one, which promises uh, third-party applications via what they call the App Store, assisted GPS and, of course, push email, is clearly an effort on Apple's part to try and grab themselves a big chunk of the lucrative business market. But is this new 3G iPhone actually good enough to do it? Well, to find out, first of all, we had to get our mitts on one. Yeah, and for that we needed someone stupid enough to get up at the crack of dawn and stand in a very long queue. And that person <laughs> was me! <laughs> five to eight in the morning, five minutes to go to the launch of the iPhone 3G. And because I'm first in, I might just get one. I was in one of hundreds of queues across the country, and people had been waiting nearly four hours. So as the shutters went up, I was pretty excited. Hi. No. 16 gig, please. Yeah, it's Thanks. right here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Love you, man. It's so emotional. <sighs> oh, can you feel the pressure building? And then the release. <sighs> oh, I like it, I like it. The curve works, the curve works. So, the looks are better than ever, but I needed to find out whether its improvements were more than skin deep. To discover its business appeal, I was joined in Canary Wharf by John, who brought along one of the iPhone's chief rivals. The Nokia E71 has some serious business tools. Full built-in keyboard, email and office software and integrated GPS. So we're going to put it up against the iPhone in three tests. First up, it's email, the cornerstone of any business phone. If I find the email setup, yeah. add new account, I'm, well, you get that. You know, yeah, typical that, 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 that Apple. Very graphic. Icon-based, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And this was surprisingly easy to set up too. Not as charmingly graphic as that, but at the same time, it was still easy. OK, let's send each other an email. Oh, yeah. What are we saying? What are Hi, we saying? it's me. Something like that. OK. OK, ready? Go. Hi. We spent a while testing out the email systems on both devices. The new iPhone now supports push email, allowing you to receive mail as soon as it's sent, while the E71 checks every few minutes for new mail. In our test, the speeds were pretty similar, though we both agreed the QWERTY keyboard on the Nokia was slightly easier to use. So, with email a draw, our second test was web browsing. I'm going to the Five Gadget Show website using 3G, and I've dreamt of this experience, and there it is, look, almost instantly. You get a much more conventional web phone experience yeah. with the Nokia, albeit a good one. As soon as you start zooming it's around the map. screen, it comes up with a little sort of representation of the whole screen in the yeah. top corner, which is good. Yeah. So the E71's got a perfectly respectable web experience, so. but on the other hand, the iPhone's got the edge, I think, because, because it was just designed around that, and yeah. it really shows. I agree. So, with its better web browsing experience, the iPhone has sneaked into the lead as we head into our final challenge, GPS. Can yep. our two phones get us from A to B? Where A is here. That's here. And B is? Canary Wharf tube station. OK. You ready? Yep. Go. PS, right. maps. Well, well, I found Canary Wharf. Let's just come up. OK, it's there. It's done. It's Me clean too. and everything. Done. Good. The 3G iPhone has upgraded its maps navigational system to use GPS. And you can use satellite imagery to help you as you move around. So I've just seen a little blue bubble there shining at me, so I know the GPS is working. And my E71 also has GPS, working with the Nokia Maps application. Canary Wharf's looming skyscrapers are a tough test for GPS, but it's exactly the sort of business environment you need it to work in. Not getting much of a signal in here. It doesn't move dynamically, the map. You have to orientate yourself by moving the phone, which is a little off-putting. Though my screen was smaller than Jason's, it seemed to be updating quickly enough most of the time. I have actually lost my GPS signal. I should now be on this road here. The GPS is showing that I'm up here. Oh, hang on. Ten metres. Is that it? And Jason's blip meant I got there just ahead of him. I'm here. Oh, oh no, oh, so is Bentley. Oh, where have you been? 
know is, is the iPhone a posy piece of bling or is it worth its hype? Well, it's nearly worth the hype, I think. I agree with John. It's uh, it's almost 5G's, but unfortunately, I'm going to give it 4G. OK. OK, not 5, because the text entry is still quite clunky, really. Uh, the camera's as rubbish as it was in the first version of the phone. Um, and the battery life does seem to be a little on the weak side with the new 3G and GPS. But everything else is just wonderful. All right, John, so what about the E71? Well, I'm going to give 4G's to the E71 because, I mean, it's text entry is better than the iPhone, the camera is better than the iPhone, the battery life is, is much better than the iPhone, and all round it's just an incredibly good business phone in actually a very stylish package. <laughs>